Hello, ladies. Welcome, Fran. Hello. 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 We are hello. so excited to have you here. Fran is a master certified coach, uh, NCC accredited with the International Coach Federation, and she's a steward of the ICF core competencies. She helps educate and advocate for those competencies as a speaker and coach mentor. And she was honored with the 2022 ICF Circle of Distinction, one of the greatest distinction any coach could ever get. Fran lives in Windsor, Colorado with her husband, two children, old perhaps, seven grandchildren, and 12 <laughs> great grandchildren. Oh my goodness. That's great amazing. That's right? impressive. And they don't live with me, by the way. <laughs> and, and the inspiration only begins there. So Fran, I would love to start with you sharing with us your major milestones and why you found them so impactful. I'll tell you ahead of time that what I saw was top values. First major milestone, <laughs> I always refer to this. When I was about four years old, I became self-aware of something about myself. I felt called to a life mission. The words were helping the world to be a better place. Beautiful. Truly. Truly. What, <laughs> what happened from there was... Um, Bottom line, I really went about it the wrong way, and it manifested as workaholism. Very high level um, standard for excellence. I was 4.0, if that means anything, valedictorian of my graduating um, high school class, and accompanied by a fear of being judged less than. Mm. Poor inner belief, not good enough, never good enough, whatever I do is not good enough. So these were the dynamics that ran my life. I married young. I was 19 years old. A few years later, when I had two children, ages five and six, I left that marriage. It was abusive. In these days, we call it a domestic violence. Mm. I didn't know what that meant, and I tried my best to make it work. This was psychological abuse and physical abuse. So I pulled my children out of there. What was the value? Integrity and uh, self-value, I was beginning to realize, wait a minute, I deserve better than this. Mm -hmm. And what happened, it took a, a year for the children to see for themselves the dynamics, the truth, and uh, stop blaming me and coming home to the single parenting lifestyle, coming home to, to that space. Yeah. Um, so um, I, I'm proud of the good job that we did. And, and there's more to that story, but I'll move on. Number two, I fell into a 20-year career in residential real estate management. I lived on site managing apartments, you know, so living on site, raising the children and um, and discovering my strengths in that. I, I worked for an absentee owner of these buildings and I discovered my my innate strengths. And, uh, and I went forward from that career and made other owners of real estate millions of dollars. And they let me. Unfortunately, I was running my workaholic addiction. So that brings me to my workaholic addiction breakdown in 1989. It just took me to my knees. And this, I took myself uh, after all those decades of personal growth work, which, by the way, I'm saying that these adversities were the motivating forces for all the personal growth work that I was doing concurrent. So I had that all within me intellectually um, and philosophically, and yet I hadn't yet the courage to take the leap of faith and um, call myself on this workaholic addiction. And I was blaming these owners who were saying, oh, we hear you. Uh, one person can't do this job. And then they just kept letting me. All right. Mm. And so I walked a beach. I walked a beach for a week because uh, I, I was like this. I was spilling water in the glass. You know, I just I probably should have checked into a hospital. But anyway, I walked the beach and I took a personal inventory and I swallowed the bitter pill of I've done this to myself. I can't blame them. They let me run my racket. I saw my strengths and I saw also that I had a belief in a world that works for everyone. I had a vision. I had that vision. And what I saw was I was leaving myself out of the equation. I was serving everyone else. And it was that fear of being judged less than. I took the risk. I decided I went that way and it didn't work. I ruined my health. I ruined actually a second marriage. I ruined my career. Um, and I know intellectually Spiritually, I need to put myself in the center and honor the God-given gifts that I've been given and my value and my worthiness. So I put I went back into that toxic environment and I made a promise to myself that I would put my two feet on the floor every morning and I would dedicate that day to honoring myself and nurturing me. And if there was anything left for anyone else, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> they would have to fight for it. <laughs> they would, you know. Wow. And what happened was the miracles started happening. Wow. 
fast forwarding, I relocated, found myself a new nurturing environment. I spent a year unraveling those addictive patterns. And uh, that was one of the most painful years of my life, not letting those patterns run and making new choices. So that brings us to 1991. And it also brought me to discovering coaching. How that unfolded was I started attracting small business entrepreneurs who um, they were not being successful in their business. And I started facilitating them in an inside out process, virtually what I had done for myself on that beach. Mm, mm, mm. Who am I? The essence of who I am, not the persona, not the personality, but who is the, so I discovered my gift of calling forth, facilitating people and discovering the essence of who they are, learning how to own and declare, I am the, my highest and best. And how do I live from there in every aspect, you know, the wheel of life, you know, every aspect, relationships, career, financial. I mean, it called forth my passion, my vision, my mission, you know, that one that I felt at four years old, it was beginning to take shape. So the rest is history. Here, here I am. You know. wow. Beautiful. What I take from it is that you've demonstrated courage, self-awareness, and admitting, you know, what you had done well and what you could do better, but being very honest with yourself, to be honest with other people. Thank and that you. at some way, the, the real you that you were when you were four years old, um, you found her back later in your life. Yeah. And since then, you rocket, uh, you know, to, <laughs> to the sky and beyond. And that tells us a lot about when you're in coherence, in agreement. Coherence, with who exactly. Are with the miracles start happening. Like Absolutely. you said, it's where the yes. miracles start happening. And my children now, you know, they, they had a, a, a parent modeling being true to herself and living from there. You know, so they have done well in their lives. I'm the matriarch of this family. Now my children are in their 50s now. And they obviously have their own children and their grandchildren. Well, I've said it as adults. I said, okay, guys. You know, I was the Wicked Witch of the West in those days. I was an apartment manager and I was working and I was always having to say, no, oh, no, mom, you loved us. That's what they took away. That is the hugest takeaway for every mom working out there. Trust that. You trusted that and they feel it. I wasn't feeling it. I was feeling guilt. and You, yeah, know, you were feeling the you Wicked know, Witch, but they were feeling shame. you that no. way. And wow. yeah, and, and they had to learn, they, they had paper routes and bears, because I couldn't hand them, right. you know, my son earned his own bicycle, they earned their own, you know, like that. And, and so as adults, here they are with really great money, money management, you know, and, and um, they've married beautifully, they have beautiful relationships, they're wonderful parents. And I finally said, you know what? That's a contribution I made. I did. I, I'm owning that now. It's I am yes. finally owning oh, that. You no, know, you know, we haven't really talked about age, but you know that our work, we work with people over 50. And this is really the, the group we're trying to inspire. So I, you might, you, it's up to you to share if you'd like to, how old you were when you had that breakdown, when this major shift happened in your life, you made these huge risky decisions. And I'm kind of curious if you have any thoughts about the advantages of being older, I can say older because we're all over 50. Oh, over yes. 50. The advantages you see for women working that, you know, especially moms over 50. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was only 37. Wow. Well, back to being over 50. I, <laughs> I, I walked the Camino in Spain at age 72. Wow. Which means she's older than 72, Dominique. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Nobody that's yeah. heard you for the last 15 minutes would ever <laughs> believe that. So I'm 79 now, halfway to 80. And as I look toward, I mean, it's surreal. Nice <laughs> you, yeah. so what are the advantages of being an older woman at work? Well, in my career, oh my goodness, I attract clients who I, I mentor and, and who I coach who want to work with my level of experience and, and wisdom. And they're willing to pay more. A um, really important message to communicate. Really yeah, it's, important. Yeah. So here I am. I'm in this new marriage. For 20 years, I was single after three failed marriages. Okay. Mm. Three failed, abusive, failed marriages that grew me to own my worthiness. So for 20 years, 
I was learning to be, the first 10 of those, I was learning to be my own best friend. I face forward, okay, it's time for me to learn to be my own best friend. So I didn't do any dating. I didn't even attract a coffee date in those years. I was busy nurturing, growing, healing myself. And then I got to a point where I realized in that past, I was so needy. So mm -hmm. that was what attracted these codependent, mm -hmm. you know, sick relationships was my neediness. And um, so I went, oh, I'm noticing something different now. I'm noticing I, I have a preference. There's a distinction here. I wanted a life partner. I've always wanted a life partner who's also a business partner that we have this together. That's just always been my, my dream and my, my preference. And so I realized something has shifted in me and I don't need, if that's not my path, if that's not how I'm on my last days and how it turned out, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. I have a whole beautiful, full life. I'm making a difference in the in the world. And um, by the way, I will never retire. I love to hear that. I love <laughs> no. why no. retire? Why? No. Why? Exactly. No, this is my divine design. This is my path. This is my sweet spot. This is living my vision and my mission. And uh, and I'm married to a man now, two years. Uh, who is also a master certified coach and we're living a lifestyle of, of our dreams thriving so yes, thriving, thriving. So oh. uh, uh, and 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 i'm so amazed and i think it's a perfect example we obviously tend to meet with a lot of people that are 50 plus or 45 plus and <laughs> yeah, we hear that. so often i'm too old for this or now my time is over and it's too late for me what i love in your sharing fran is that it's never too late to create your business to be successful to be a shark is not is aggressive, but a nice shark in the business world. Um, and to have a, <laughs> to be a life married, to be newly married. E exactly. So the, the message here that we hear is never too late. And you're the perfect example of proving. I never gave blah, up. Blah, blah. This is for the audience. Three failed marriages. My girlfriends who are so close to me, like, oh, my God, Fran, not another dating relationship. Oh, please. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> and they just wanted to protect me you know they just wanted to love and protect me right and I heard that but in my knowing in my deepest knowing I was on my path of healing and I never gave up for my dream of having this lifestyle and this quality of relationship my my question though because you, you know that wake up shake up thrive is about thriving and and you're a perfect example of thriving at your age which I find beautiful has this thriving definition changed over the decades? Or do you think that now you know the perfect definition of thriving because of what you've gone through and your resilience I do. since your courage? I do, uh, Dominique. Thank you. It was when living your vision was birthed, when when it emerged, when it came through me. And I, I recognized, and I actually coined this mm. in, in 1991, the key to living the life and the work that you love is living true to the essence of who you are. Mm. Oh, beautiful. beautiful. That is so profoundly true. I, I, I just can't, I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. One of the things that pops up for me is that wisdom is not because of age. It's thanks to age and experience. It's thanks to it. It was a gift that you knew how to embrace. There's something else that showed up for me as you spoke that I'd love just to say, which is girlfriends. And I really feel like as well, just, just the three ladies here, it's just something we can share. And I think it's something that our audience will, will share. Girlfriends are phenomenal. You're an inspiration for many women um, and, and the living proof that we can balance life at home, life at work, and it doesn't have to sacrifice anything to really feel good about it. And that both are possible despite of the many struggle. And I think that's one additional element is that yeah. women are equipped for struggle and equipped for obstacles much, much more than we think. Oh. And that grows with, with age and that grows with experience. Yes. Uh, so thank All you right. very much. Thank you so much for today.